Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. We are still in the great state of Texas, and we're just glad that uh, we can spend this morning with you. And uh, we're going to have, if you remember last week, we studied about John the Baptist and what his mission was that God gave him to do. And that mission was to lead people to repent of their sins. And he did a water baptism, but he told the people that somebody greater than him would follow him. And that was Jesus Christ. And this week, we're going to study about Jesus and how he prepares himself for the ministry that he has been called to and the reason God sent him on earth. And it's going to be an exciting study. It's a little shorter than a lot of them, but I, there's a lot to learn in these few Bible uh, verses. So we'll learn that Jesus faced the same kinds of frustrations and complications in life that we do, that he faced temptation. And, and in particular, we're going to learn about a time when he would have been fasting for 40 days in the desert and the temptation that Satan tried to lead him into. We'll learn that he faced hunger. I mean, just imagine 40 days without anything to eat. It's hard for me to imagine four hours without anything to eat. But I, I'm aware. <laughs> Satan attempted to use, tried to tempt him by using his power to turn in a, a rock into a loaf of bread. And he, he also tempted him by um, his very life. He told Jesus to throw himself off the cliff and to prove that he could, um, that, that he would be saved, that he would be protected by God. Essentially, he tempted him to test God. And he, he offered him power. He tempted him with power. He, and he offered him actually a much easier way to get power compared to God's plan because God's plan led to the crucifixion and then the resurrection. But Jesus followed God plan, God's plan, even though Satan tempted him into sin and to a, a source of power that at least looked easier. It was probably mostly a lie. Well, the plan, if he followed Jesus, or I mean, uh, if Jesus followed the devil, would not lead to the salvation of sin for us. That's true. And would not restore the world unto God. So why he could have gained power easily without any um, harm to himself, he was able to um, resist that. So let's pray. You will lead us? I will. Good morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this day where we are. We have sunshine. We also have enough to eat. And we have comfort and clothes on our bodies, and we give you great thanks for all of that. Mostly, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. Please make us good learners and good teachers today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to start in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came, meaning the devil, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Verse 4, but he answered and he said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's mouth. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, the very top. And he said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Remember, it's always foolish to test God. And if you're testing God, 
you are probably testing your own faith and not God. So continuing in verse 7, Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the, de the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Now this same story is told uh, almost identical in Luke and partly in Mark. So it harmonizes in the gospel. Now we're going to go into the question and answer period, which is always the most fun. It is. Do you have questions today or do I, you do I? I have questions. Okay, I'll try to come up with some answers. Okay. What did Jesus do while in the wilderness? While he was in the wilderness, he prayed and he fasted, meaning he didn't eat anything. And he was preparing to do a work, and that work was his ministry. So kind of think a little bit about all the noise we have around us, whether it's today with the pandemic, whether it's another time of year, another season in our lives. Think about all the people and the noise in our lives. Sometimes it can be very, very hard for us to concentrate and focus. And so he went, he, he moved away from all that noise. And, and by fasting, he, he stopped eating and drinking. And, and that can actually help us separate the noise and the needs and the worries of our lives from our focus so that we can focus instead on God and on strengthening our, our spirits. Yeah, he fasted because he took that time that he would normally be eating uh, to be more in tune with God, to pray more deeply to God. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important for us to get a quiet place when we want to be alone with God. Sometimes it's important to go to a private room or a private area outside and just commune you and God, read your Bible, and talk to God. That includes turning things off, like our devices. So I have the Bible on my iPad. I do a lot of reading of the Bible on my phone. But sometimes I really, really need to focus. And even just the little dings on my devices when a new email comes in or, <coughs> excuse me, I have to put that down and get quieter and get back to a paper Bible. That helps me a lot. I agree 100%. I try to do my... Uh, Bible study be around 5 o'clock in the morning. It's pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. And I can just listen to what God has to say to me. And I don't always do it the way I should, but I strive for it. And that's what you should do. Okay, question number two. How long had Jesus gone without eating? 40 days. That's more than a month. That's more than a month. You know, most of us, I, I don't ever go a full day without eating or drinking. I, I can't make it a full day. And so for me, it's really, really hard to imagine how incredibly hungry Jesus would be. But I do know when I get to that place where I really need food, where my body needs food and how it feels and how I can start to get a headache and a stomach ache. And um, it, it, I, just thinking about 40 days. That's obviously more than a week. It's more than a month. He must have been incredibly hungry. And, and that's why the devil tempted him. And tempted him with food. He wanted to get him in his gut. He wanted to get him in his some of his most primary needs. Well, how did Satan suggest Jesus get food? Well, he said, Jesus, just there's rocks around here. Turn it into bread. You know, so we think about fulfilling or filling our stomach with that quote, just take the stones, turn the bread, and eat it. But what 
that Satan was really trying to do was to get Jesus not to be totally dependent on God. Mm -hmm. And that's why he kind of did it. He was sneaky about it. And the story tells us in ways we can understand in our lives what this kind of temptation was like. So if you think about your mom or your dad or your, your grandparents or whoever, they'd make a great big dinner for you, and it's a very nice meal. Think about Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. Or just think about a dinner that they prepare for you lovingly at the end of the day. And they ask you, please don't eat anything before dinner. And you know that there's a box of Oreos. And you know where it is, and you know you can get some Oreos out of that box without With making chocolate any. Chocolate milk. And, <laughs> and you know there's chocolate milk in the refrigerator. And you know you can get there, and maybe you can eat. You're super hungry, and maybe you can sneak a little bit of that chocolate milk and a few of those Oreo cookies. That, that's how you think about that as a temptation, and then you think about not having eaten for 40 days. And, and, and he was fasting. He was fasting as, as he prepared and as he prayed. And Satan knew that he could tempt him with some food. What he didn't necessarily know is that Jesus would hold up against that temptation. So in question four, it says, where did Satan take Jesus next? He took him to the highest spot in the temple. And while they were there... <coughs> Jesus told Satan that we should not test God. We read that in the scripture. And when we are tempted to test God, so if we're, you know, if we're tempted to kind of pray to God to maybe really show us how much he loves us by giving us that special gift we were hoping for, that kind of testing of God, that that is not that's not a good idea. That presumes we know better about what God should be doing than what we, what he should be doing. So trying to turn the tables and setting God up for a test and seeing whether he passes that test or fails that test is putting yourself in the shoes of God and him in your shoes. And Jesus right here very specifically warned Satan, we don't test God. And question five says, what did Satan offer Jesus? Well, in addition to food, um, he also offered him power over everything. He was trying to tempt him to sin. And the sin, of course, would be going against God's will. But he was trying to get him to, he was trying to give him something that he thought, that Satan thought was so attractive that Jesus would just abandon God and go into the sin path with, with Satan. Because if we remember from the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the Bible, the very beginning, the foundation of the world created by God, God put forth a plan for redemption for mankind. That's true. And that plan was Jesus. And Satan here is trying to divert from the plan. And Jesus knew what lie ahead of him. It was going to be very difficult times that he would have to go through. But God told us early in the Bible, redemption of sin is through blood and blood only. So if we're going to have salvation, Christ had to do what he did as a young man. And sometimes we refer to Satan as the deceiver. And he was deceiving Jesus. He was, he was offering him a shortcut. You don't have to take God's path. I've got a shortcut. Um, and it'll give you all the power. And, um, but that, that would mean that, God, that Jesus was not able to offer us salvation, which was part of God's plan. A major part. <laughs> For us, it's a huge, big part. And um, Jesus knew his mission, and he knew that, that Satan was trying to get him to move away from the mission God had for him and to join him in leading sin. And then our final question for today is, what did Jesus death on the cross defeat he defeated sin and he defeated death and he also gave us he set us a great example and he gave us oh, he taught us how to fight temptation too that when we really want that chocolate milk and those cookies we can turn to God for strength and literally turn to God in prayer and say God 
My mom, my dad, my grandma has made this wonderful meal. I don't want to ruin my appetite and I don't want to disobey. And please help me do that. You help Jesus in the desert. Please help me. And you can pray for God's help no matter how trivial it seems. Cookies and 40 days of starvation doesn't seem to compare. But there is nothing that is so small or so big, nothing, that you can't take to God, to Jesus' feet, and ask them for help. Nothing. And as we see that through Christ's death and resurrection on the, uh, on the cross three days later, uh, we have eternal life, and that's guaranteed to the believer. Mm -hmm. So we can hold on to that promise that God gave us through the death and resurrection of his son and that we can be so grateful that Jesus followed the plan, stayed the course, and was, while he was tempted, he never even thought about uh, turning away from God. So let's pray and if you'll lead us in the closing prayer. Okay, I certainly will. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the kids that may listen to the lesson, whether it's today or later. We ask that you keep our hearts and our minds open to what you're trying to teach us here. Forgive us if we've taught poorly. Strengthen us to learn well, Lord. We ask that we look to Jesus' example and that every time we're tempted, every time we are tempted to be unkind to someone, Anytime we're tempted to boast or uh, disobey, anytime that we are straying from the lessons that you have taught us in your word and the path that you've guided us to take, anytime we're tempted, Lord, please lift our chin, lift our hearts, fold our hands in prayer and help us get past that temptation. We give great thanks because you know you will. And we say all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.